thank you all for what seems to me from over there to have been a very lively evening of conversation. That seems to have gone well so far too. And so it falls to me to remind you that we have, after uh, Eckhart Cortes will have a talk to us, we will have the chance to ask some questions. And so I expect each of you to have thought up something controversial, difficult, funny, entertaining. You can tell a joke if you need to. But do something to make this evening really memorable. And remember that Eckhart Cortes is so clever and good that he can deal with almost any question on corporate governance that you would like to ask him, even if you are a full professor. So now, especially if you are, because he, after all, is a practitioner. And when we say that Eckhart Cortes is a practitioner, we are talking something very serious here. He is somebody who has had one of the most distinguished careers as an industrialist at the very, very top level in all of Europe. I mean, amongst many other things, the one that stuck in my mind was the fact that he was head, that is to say, the chief executive of Mercedes-Benz, first of all, the trucks and lorries, which is a huge business we don't tend to think of as we sit in our Mercedes E-classes and S-classes and C-classes and go faster cars. But he was also chief executive of Mercedes-Benz cars. Can you imagine what a big responsibility that is to your customers, to your employees, to your shareholders, to the long term? And he's had several other jobs. Um, when he left Mercedes, he took up several other industrial posts and he then took some supervisory positions. For example, uh, chairing the supervisory board of Metro AG. And then lastly, I would mention Volvo, which he will tell you probably something about. But he has been, you know, a very long-term investment in Volvo through his partnerships, most famously in Sevian, which is a, a different kind of investment fund. It raises private equity type money. Um, it's very wrong for people to conflate this. As somebody used conflation earlier. That was you, Barbara. Uh, this is not a hedge fund. This is a sort of long-term capital, the patient capital, that some people think is really important. And what it means is a commitment to staying with your investment and your belief in what can happen, and then making sure that you see it through to the end. And I think, if I'm not wrong, that Volvo has proved a good experience. But you look, he will tell you more than me, about what happened at Volvo. But to make what happened at Volvo work you need to be very serious about the actualities of corporate governance. This is not about regression analysis. This is about serious, serious responsibilities to governments, to society, to employees, to customers, and in the end, to the owners of the capital. And if you're good at it, you can do very well. And you can come out of it with your reputation enhanced, which is not always the case with capitalists, but is most certainly the case with Eckhart Cortes, who has experience of so many systems of corporate governance, and as a really serious player and practitioner, we should listen with great attention to what you have to say, Eckhart. So, here is the floor, and remember everybody that Daniela weber will come to make sure that you ask good questions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I feel honored to be able to speak such a distinguished group of people. Um, and uh, I know it's late, it's 9.30 p.m., but hopefully it's not going to be too boring for you. Um, and as David just said, you have to listen now to a practitioner, not to a scientist. And I was a little bit worried because I've, I want to be honest right at the outset. I was not aware that ECGI calls itself a scientific institution, so I'm trembling a little bit not being a scientist. Um, so um, what you're going to hear now is the view from a guy that everything he knows he gained in practical, practical corporate life. So my apologies at the outset. So I want to share with you some reflections on the effectiveness or quality, if you will, of board work, and again, it's not science-based, it's practical experience over a period now on, in board work of, well, I dare say over 20 years. I don't want to impress you, but uh, 
I just want to let you know that you know I have served so far on 13 boards, uh, or as we say in Germany, also Aufsichtsrat for the Germans, um, and uh, trying to translate Aufsichtsrat, the German word, uh, into into English. Literally, it would almost be Aufsicht is more or less control, and Rat is more or less advice. So the German word is a combination of control and advice. We come back to that later. Um, so 13 boards I've, been, I've served on. There are uh, 10 uh, publicly listed uh, companies, um, i.e. on the stock exchange, and three, well, quite sizable companies, but wholly owned by, by other companies. Obviously, I will focus in and concentrate on the publicly listed entities. And these 10 I had the privilege to serve on, or serve for. Um, six of them based in Germany, two in Sweden, one in the US and one in the UK. So um, I sort of, not as a scientist, but compared to some extent, um, a board experience stemming from these four different countries. Now, I will talk about uh, a little bit about uh, <clears throat> roles and responsibilities of a board member, uh, and then try to, based on my experience, try to figure out what are the decisive, in my view, in my view, in my biased view, decisive factors that determine board effectiveness or board, board works quality, right or wrong. But uh, I was informed that hopefully we can sort of exchange some views in, in a little bit of Q&A. Um, this, um, because my experience is it's always helpful to learn from your questions what really matters to you and not what I think might matter for you. Well, uh, as I just said, um, Board of Directors, German word Aufsichtsrat, control and advice. Uh, and I think this um, control and advice uh, describes quite well um, what defines the roles and responsibilities of a board, board of directors. And I um, dare say, well, one of the questions, not I dare say, one of the questions, if it's control and advice, you could also say a board of directors is nothing else as the agent of the shareholders, of the owners. But the question is, is that correct or not? Is it the agent of the shareholders, of the owners, or is it the agent of the stakeholders? <laughs> and the answer is pretty much dependent on the fact in which country you sort of look at it. In Germany, the answer would be different, in my view, from the US. And in Sweden, it would be different again. In UK, I don't know, question mark. The next question, Rosen talking about roles and responsibilities of board members, is is it the is the uh, if, uh, if we say the, the board is the agent of the shareholders who acts at the end of the day in the interest of the shareholders, is that the same as acting in the interest of the company? Also a question that in my view is open. Or you might say which is dependent, or the answer is dependent on where you live, or where the board is, or the company is headquartered, or registered, or situated. One thing seems to be clear, I emphasize seems to be clear, clear that roles and responsibilities do not include operational responsibility for the company. This is obviously with, in Germany, comes with the, as we call it, Vorstand in Germany, or executive committee, or whatever you call it, um, in, in other countries. Next question that comes into play, if the board is not, if, th if that were right, if the board is not responsibility for operational issues, is it equally true for one-tier boards, or only for two-tier boards? Is it equally true for a company where the CEO is also the chairman of the board, 
or is it only true for companies, even if it's a one-chair board, where the CEO is not the chairman of the board? The next open question, which in my view deserves some research, but this is up to you for the scientists. Now, but I think in very general terms, at least again, and I don't have to repeat it, based on my experience, the board, or the Aufsichtsrat in German, the board is not in charge of the, uh, of the operations of the company. That I think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a claim that is, um, um, that is true. Now, if that is so, not responsible for operationally running the companies, the question is, what are the main uh, responsibilities of a board of directors basically irrespective of the question where the company is registered. US, UK, Germany, Sweden, I don't know, you name it. One thing, one responsibility in my view is very clear. It is what I call management development. What, I, what do I mean? It is the first and foremost responsibility of a board of directors to determine who should run the company, i.e. composition, of the executive committee. Number one, um, this is not in order of priority, it's just what I mentioned as a first, first job. In order to do so, uh, in order to make adequate and right decisions, who should be CEO, who should be CFO, who should be in charge of whatever, a board of directors must have, in inverted commas, access to the management levels below the executive committee. Unless you know them, you cannot make an adequate decision who should be promoted as the next candidate to the executive committee or even be developed to become CEO in, I don't know, X, Y, Z years. So that's one, in my view, very important um, task or responsibility. And again, it is, it is absolutely necessary to get to know people, operational people, who work below the absolute top level. Number two, um, and again, not order of priority, number two, task of the board to develop a, um, I call it state-of-the-art compensation system. How to, how to come up, how to create the right incentive structure for, in German we would, excuse me, would say board of management or a Vorstand, or executive committee in order to come up with the right operational decisions and strategy decisions for the company. And here again, the question comes into play, does the executive committee have to fulfill the wishes and desires of the shareholders or of stakeholders? Ladies and gentlemen, in my view, an open question. Anyway, the board of directors has to make decisions and has to define a, what I just called, state-of-the-art compensation system and if you were both comp components, short-term incentive system and long-term incentive system. It should set and create and define the right incentives. It should not be too complex. So the people who get paid in accordance with the system should understand the compensation of this system without having a 3A degree in mathematics. Um, so it must be simple, not too complex, which is the same, but, but set incentives in the right direction. In my view, in my view, an enormously complex task. Three, it is the responsibility of the board of directors. <clears throat> and again, it's, we are not differentiating now between UK, Sweden, US, Germany, Italy, what you name it. It is um, the, uh, one of the main responsibilities of the board to, in conjunction, together with the executive committee, to define the right strategy for the company. Short term, return, long term. It is not ultimately created or developed by the board. It's the <laughs> task and job of the executive committee, but it's sort of a give and take um, and should be a constant discussion. Number four is also for the board to decide on or agree with uh, sort of 
operational questions. For instance, budget planning. Budget 2019, next year to come up. In, I would dare say in 80%, 90% of the companies I know, um, the, the budget planning for the next year has to be agreed upon by the board of directors. So in order to be able to do so, you must dig into the numbers to a certain extent. You don't have to sort of create them and work them up, but to sort of know what do I, do I say yes or do I say no? Um, and um, obviously, but I'm saying the obvious now, this question might also, budget for next year is okay or not okay, might be related to the compensation system. If you have an incentive system which pays management according to plan achievement, it's a different question. Um, rather than having a system, management gets paid short term X percent of operating profit, then it's, it's the, the plan itself is not relevant for personal compensation. Again, in, in my view, an extremely tricky issue. And last but not least, and that especially maybe uh, now the, if you will, German you, uh, there is a tendency uh, and a discussion that also the board of directors, especially the chairman, should enter into, direct, uh, into a direct dialogue with investors. Traditionally, it was basically the CEO. Now more and more what comes sort of surfaces, if you will, uh, is that also the, at least the chairman, maybe even if there is a committee, a strategy committee on the board of directors, that also the head of the strategy committee should enter into discussions with the main shareholders or main shareholders, probably together with the CEO, to sort of discuss with them the uh, strategy of the company. That's in my view, there were five points, the main responsibilities of a board of directors. One conclusion, one interim conclusion, in order to be able to do so and get involved in those discussions and decisions as a board member, you need to have at least a certain understanding of the business or uh, being a board member of the business the company does, and I come back to that, it gets that question or that requirement gets more and more complicated the more diversified the company is. That also explains that there are lots of active shareholders out there who are trying to urge companies to get more focused and reduce complexity uh, in their way of doing business just to be able to better understand and better drive the company into the right direction. I mean, I'm saying the obvious and I come back to that, 10 divisions is way more difficult to oversee than one, obviously. Now, let me come to um, my next point. And again, I cannot emphasize enough, personal experience, I apologize in advance. What determines the effectiveness, effectiveness of board work or the quality, quality of board work, board work? First point is the legal framework the board works in. One ex extreme, well not extreme, one example, Germany. We have a corporate governance system in Germany, which probably all of you know, with what we call co-determination. What does co-determination mean? We have an, on the board, or on the Aufsichtsrat, uh, and on the board of directors, an equal number, equal number of employee representatives and shareholder representatives. It's 10-10 or 8-8 or 6-6, but it's an equal number. The chairman has a casting vote. If you're interested in that, in that, uh, tool or lever, we can come back to that. Chairman has a casting vote, but there are many chairmen in Germany who sort of shy away from using the casting vote. So then it's 10-10, it's 8-8 or 6-6. Co-determination in Germany. The only country in the world uh, that has uh, introduced that system in the year 1976. Nobody on the globe has copied it. There is two explanations. Either the Germans are way smarter than the rest of the world which might be the case, or the rest of the world has been skeptical that this is the right system. Irrespective of the answer, that is our system. 
The size of the board, board of directors, is defined by the number of employees employed in German facilities. I, once, I, was, was, I was once chairman of a company in Germany, publicly listed. 10% of the, 15% of the workforce was in Germany, 85%. The employee representatives, employee representatives on the board of directors, only Germans, only representing German, <coughs> German interests, if you will. At least we had the risk that that would be so. I mean, I stop here. Um, there are, as you know, other, country, other countries uh, where you do not find employee representatives on the board of directors, US, UK. And there are countries where you find employee representatives on the board of directors, Sweden, for, as an example, but not an equal number. But the typical thing in Sweden is one third, two third, two third shareholder representatives, one third employee representatives. This, or the composition of the board of directors in this respect, employees yes, no, and if yes, how many, determines the culture and the quality of the board work. In other words, what you find in Germany, in the meantime, one board meeting consists out of three. There is a shareholders pre-meeting, shareholder representatives only with the executive committee, there is an employee board meeting, only employees with the CEO and the chairman, and then the board meeting. I mean, it's, it's sort of a creative, not creative, but you know, sort of we must find something to circumvent the disadvantages the German system has, and that has been the outcome. Next factor influencing the quality of the board work and effectiveness is the ownership structure. So, um, I've served on many different boards, on boards with a dominant shareholder, I mean now uh, with dominant, more, owning more than 50% of the shares. And, and uh, then it's pretty clear who defines and decides uh, how the uh, composition of the board of directors looks like. It's a dominating shareholder. And with dominating, I mean AGM majority, not necessarily 50%, it's publicly listed. Um, the question is, do I have AGM and, uh, majority because the, the AGM under normal circumstances decides who sits on the board, who serves on the board. And if you might, but you know, in the interest of time, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk about it. it is, it's then also interesting, who is, if you have a dominating shareholder, who is it? Is it a family, a privately owned company, or is it a, another publicly listed company, i.e. a financial holding or something? Again, here you find differences. Number three, um, factor that defines uh, effectiveness of boards, quality of board work, is the, what I try, would love to call the governance culture. And the governance culture is related to the system, whether you have a you know, co-determined board, equal number of representatives, employees, shareholders, or not. So um, ex you find extreme differences in Germany, uh, as I said, you know, one board meeting has been split now in three. Shareholder pre-meeting, employee pre-meeting, board meeting. The board meeting usually, I mean, in, in Germany, a long board meeting, a very long board meeting is, a very long board meeting is four hours, a long board meeting is three. I serve on the board of Volvo, AB in Sweden, among others. Um, a board meeting is one and a half days, six times a year. In Germany, you have four three, four hours. Um, obviously, I only have indirectly answered the questions where the depth of discussion is higher in a three hours meeting or in a one and a half days board meeting. And then also, um, in not, which I haven't mentioned, including board trips one week to different locations in the world. So, the legal framework or the, the, the system defines to pretty much high degree, in my view, the quality of the board work and the preparedness of board members to also have discussions on the quality of work of executive committee members. Mm -hmm. In Germany, you find a tendency 
Never attack the CEO in a board meeting because the employee representative sit there and it might not be good for him, which is totally different from, from, from other countries. Unless the CEO is the chairman, uh, like you frequently find it in the US. Am I talking too long? I've stopped in, no, no, okay. Oh, so, <laughs> okay, no, I try to finish in a second. Um, and then the next factor, I already touched upon it, um, that defines Borberg is the, what I call the complexity of the company. Uh, I love to exaggerate, a 10 division company is way more difficult to oversee and, and steer, you know, from a board perspective than a sort of focused, uh, so focused one, one, uh, one, division, one division company. And that is, has become part of the public debate, at least in some countries, and, and this pressure, especially from activist shareholders, reduce complexity of the company uh, and, um, and um, increase in so far effectiveness and efficiency of Borberg. One of the companies, you know, I, it's an ex dex 30 company in Germany. I was originally uh, chairman and then became CEO, it's a very unusual way, but anyway. Uh, Metro AG used to be the third biggest uh, retail company in the world. They now spun off one of their big businesses and uh, created two shares out of one in order to sort of get more focused um, and reduce complexity. And last but not least, the, uh, that is my, <coughs> I, my final point I want to touch upon is, and again we talk about quality and effectiveness of board work, who defines who serves, who gets elected to the board? Who is it? As I said, there's obviously um, an, a simple answer if you have a dominating shareholder. Uh, we say, to make it easy, 50% plus of the votes, and it might be even a family, it's the family. So, boom, that is, that, that's it. Um, and who will they select? Well, probably those people who they think represents their interest best on the board of their company. I once was once CEO of a company, co completely in a big German company, completely family-owned since 250 years. None of the family members was allowed to 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 to, to work inside the company. Um, so they were on the board, and they invited people who they knew very well on the board of directors to sort of support them. Tick the box clear: who gets elected? Um, financial holding companies. Um, now you have the. The one of the most recent examples, Siemens in Germany, uh, who, who floated their healthcare business uh, with the interest in him of health in years. Uh, Siemens is an 80% 80, 80 shareholder or 85% shareholder. Who decides who serves on the board? The Siemens Board of Management. Easy. Now, we come to um, the interesting question, who decides who serves on the board in a situation without dominating shareholder? maybe a big shareholder that in certain circumstances might have AGM majority, but dependent on the attendance rate of shareholders might also end up not having majority in an AGM. I don't call that dominating shareholder. So this is, you know, spread out uh, shareholding. The question is who at the end of the day decides who serves on the board? You might say, well, obviously the AGM, 10 out of 10. That's right, because you need to be elected but the question is, who makes the proposals? Who should be elected? And here come big difference, in my view, into play. One of the, well, I say now, not only German, but typically German system. You have um, now in many German uh, public listed entities a nomination committee that makes proposals to the AGM for board members that should be elected. But the nomination committee is composed of board members. So board members make the proposal to the AGM who should be elected, not the shareholders. Board members, existing board members, and existing board members basically means the chairman. Basically in Germany, the chairman at least defines and decides who should be elected in the next AGM. And the election period in Germany is five years. So if you get elected, you sit there for five years. 
in order to be thrown out, I mean, it never happens, in order to be thrown out, you need an extra AGM to get rid of a board member on the shareholder side. Employee represent is different. They get elected by the employees. I'm talking about shareholders now. So five years election period, basically the nomination committee decides who, for the AGM who should be elected and basically in the nomination committee it's the chairman. So the big risk here is, ladies and gentlemen, I don't say that it constantly happens, but the risk is that you have sort of a buddy culture. So depending on the character um, and the uh, preparedness of the chairman to really you know, also get into conflict, he might, or she might, I have to be politically correct, um, propose people, he knows, he says, okay, that guy is okay, that lady is okay, and in 99.9% .9 of the cases, these people get elected by the AGM, and then they sit there for five years. UK or US, especially in those cases, one tier board, CEO is also chairman, it's pretty clear who makes a proposal and who sort of steers who, who should be my colleagues on the board. And now, we just talked about it, the big difference is Sweden. Um, Sweden also has a nomination committee, but with a, with a fundamental difference to Germany, the nomination committee is composed of shareholders and not of board members. So it's uh, the, the, the biggest five or four shareholders, they, or the, the, the election committee is composed of the four biggest shareholders plus the chairman, and they decide on who should serve on the board and who should get elected in the AGM, and the election period is one year. One, not five, one. So I, I, I serve on one Swedish board and I used to serve on another Swedish board and the, the, the extremely healthy aspect, under normal circumstances you want to be re-elected. So you can't sit there for four years and say, well, no, I'm, that's okay now, you know, I get paid, I'm a board member and my re-election is up in, in, in five years. If you would do that in Sweden, then at least the risk is growing that you would not be re-elected. So, in my view, uh, I mean, I know there are a lot of counter arguments. Are there four, four shareholders big enough to be able to determine who, or, or to define the proposal who should, get, uh, who should get elected? But leave that aside at least for a second. The system as such is, in my view, um, the superior system, at least if I compare UK, US, Germany, Sweden. Uh, and again, this is not based on research, it's based on personal experience. I've been serving now on Swedish boards for altogether more than seven years, uh, and I haven't found any other board out of the 13 I served on that has a, uh, an equal quality of in-depth discussion on operational issues, strategy issues, and found composition of people who really try to contribute. And, last but not least, Swedish boards have a and uh, by the way, I'm not paid by Swedish companies, so it's, uh, it's, my, it's my conviction. You have, if you have a 15 people board, 10 or uh, say 10 shareholder representatives and, and five employee represent, representatives who, who come from the company. In Germany, I haven't mentioned it, some of them come from union headquarters and have no clue about, you know, the, the company itself. Now, um, and the good thing, even though it's a one-tier board in Sweden, the CEO is, is the CEO, is, is a board member, he, he, is not the, he, he doesn't chair the board, the chair is a different person, contrary to many cases in the US or in the UK. Um, so all in all, um, the, 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 my takeaways from my, I don't know, 20 years of board experience in the 13 boards is, um, first of all, try to avoid a one-tier system where CEO is also chairman. It, might, it leads to conflict of interest and complicates things. Try to avoid that. CEO should not be chairman. Number two, one-tier system is pretty much okay, provided that chairman is not CEO, it's a different person. And now maybe for your, for your ears comes something, something surprising. 
have employee representatives, represent, you can't, can't speak to but representatives on the board of directors is positive, provided that the number of employees is lower than, share, so you never end up in sort of, um, um, how do you call it, um, equal votes. Um, so Swedish system, 510 or 48, whatever, um, is good. Why is it good? Because the sort of discussion you have on these type of boards uh, is very much to the point, it's very in-depth. Employee representatives understand why certain tough decisions must be taken or should be taken. They are part of the discussion. And my experience, seven-year Swedish board, is that in 99% of the of the, of the cases, they transfer the employee representatives, what they heard on the board, into the company, which then facilitates things, especially when you have to close down plants or get rid of people. So the right co-determination is good. The wrong co-determination, which we have in Germany, is bad. Election period, not too long, whether it's one year or two years, I don't care. Five years is too long. And the decision power to make proposals to the AGM who should get elected should not be the board. Don't invite buddies, but this uh, proposal power, if it will, should be with the shareholders. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> it's half an hour. Well, thank you very much, Eckhart. Um, when we discussed uh, who was going to speak, we were looking exactly for that. Somebody who has that experience from the executive committee as well as boards, different boards, different countries, and who is open to speak about it. So thank you very much. Um, who would like to ask questions? I have tons, but I'd rather go. Yeah. Barbara. Um, first of all, change, zero percent of the cases, but um, it might happen, but I mean, don't get me wrong now, um, I, I chair the board of Bilfinger, uh, it's one of Serbian's portfolio companies in Germany, within the, in the last six months I think we have invested in the compensation committee to deal with that question four days altogether, involving uh, comp consultants. Um, and we are still not satisfied with the system because we still think, you know, there is a sort of conflict of interest between reduced complexity without sacrificing the right incentive system. I have personally never experienced it, but if you would, do you think it could happen? The answer is yes. Pretty much depends on the system. And, and the, uh, but the, the debate is more intense in the UK than in Germany. Germany has gotten used to, I mean, uh, compared to 15 or 20 years ago to quite significant payments. Uh, and in the UK you have a different discussion. Just for those who are not from Germany, uh, in Germany, as everywhere, we have a high degree of discussion over executive compensation. Um, the govern government uh, commission for the code has made proposals um, two years or three years ago, uh, which were currently changing again. So there's a lot of uncertainty as to what is the right system and the reduction of complexity and yet fairness in yes. incentives is really a, the challenge. Other questions? And, the, and, and excuse me, um, uh, there is no, in, in Germany, there is no uh, um, say on pay. So they, they, the, the, the AGM does not decide. They can raise their voice, but there is no decision power with the AGM regarding compensation system. Not but obviously, not yet, yeah, not yet, I agree. But obviously you try to avoid uh, discussions and come up with a, yeah, what is a fair system, a balanced system, a balanced system. Xavier.
no, you are supposed to be the uh, people uh, that have a main job, and then maybe they are in one or two boats at most. Or, or there is no, or you have not seen any differences? No, no, I have seen differences, but uh, I mean, I think you worded it well. I mean, if you're, say, just say you are CEO in a company. Then if you're a CEO, you normally work between five and six days a week. So if you assume a, a board seat in another company, um, you need additional time. So if you then do it on Sundays, fine with me. If you uh, say, well, that I do sort of, sort of a, uh, an extra job, um, then it might have been possible 15, 10 years ago, but it will not be possible anymore in the future because the requirement um, to work as a board member is, is constantly in increasing. So uh, what you could do, you could be, uh, and, and uh, you could, I mean, if you are not CEO or member of an executive committee or what have you, uh, I, would, I would say you could assume up to four to five <coughs> board seats, not more. And there are companies out there. One example is British American Tobaccos. They say a board member who, who serves on the board of British American Tobaccos can or is only allowed to have maximum four board seats. BAT one plus three, done. So if you want more, then you have to step down in another board. I think this is a very sound system. Because, I mean, you, we don't, I don't want to make things too complicated, but you also have committees on the board. You have audit committee, you have strategy committee, you have God knows what committee. So which always means an increasing workload. And at what you can afford to do at, and, uh, at the end of the day, are you prepared to work four days a week, five, six, or seven? Eight is impossible. So this is, that's the answer to the question. And what you find is, again, going 20 years back, um, um, you know, what we used to call in Germany, probably you don't know, the Deutschland AG. So that, you know, uh, a CEO here is, is a board member there, and that CEO is practically a board member in my company. So balance of power, I don't kill you, don't, you don't kill me, right? So this is what we had in, in, in Germany. That, is, that has come to an end. Uh, and what, and, and, and what, what, what came with it is that it is, I don't, hardly don't know any German CEO, active CEO in a big company that has more than one board seat, not more, not more. In, and again, 10, 15, 20 years back, it was totally different. There are quite a number of companies that totally prohibit uh, non-executive positions yeah, to also, any right. board member, not only yeah. the CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Well, the last question is extremely difficult. I'm not a lawyer. Um, first, f yeah, f first, f <laughs> first question, who should decide on the remuneration system for board members, in my view, the AGM? The, the, the owners. Because board members are agents of the owners. And the owner should decide how much do I pay my agent. This is my view. Uh, it maybe it's a very simplistic view, but I mean, you have people who run the company, you have people or companies who own the company, and there's somebody in between. This is a board of directors. And the owners should decide how much do I pay, nobody else. So if I would own a company, and I would, I would, would not be prepared to serve on the board, I hire board members, I want to decide how much I pay, and according to which scheme. Fixed pay only, combination of fixed and variable, depends on the situation of the company and the preferences of the owners. Uh, liability, I tell you, um, is I'm pretty much involved now as a chairman at Bilfinger in such a liability, liability case. It's awful. And I shy away from giving you the ultimate answer because I really don't know. 
what the appropriate system is. Please accept that answer because I'm, I, I, haven't, I have not made up my mind yet being involved in a very, very difficult and tricky case. Very difficult. Well, Klaus, as regards to your first question, I mean, the true uh, issue of board pay is, of course, in very diversified uh, board, uh, boards. There's no shareholder that would come forward and make a proposal. What do you do then? And these are really most of the cases. And there is no common standard in Germany, and I don't know of the other countries. No, it's, uh, it's something to be thought about, but uh, certainly the pay that board members received 10 years ago would be totally inadequate now because they now have to do so much more. Yeah. Dan Daniela, you had a question. Yeah, but if, if, if you see it as your... Uh, first of all, the first part of your question, if I understood correctly, I mean, in Germany, we have the crazy situation that dependent, as I said, you know, dependent on the number of employees in Germany, you end up with a 20-person board, 10 shareholder representatives and 10 employee representatives. It's absolutely nuts. Because you, you cannot, you know, have sort of intense, to the point, uh, controversial discussions in a 20-people board, 10-10. You haven't, there isn't, you know, a way out in Germany. It's called the um, um, uh, Societas Europea, SE, uh, SE. Then the board is, irrespective of the question how many people you employ in Germany, it's 12 people, six and six. The only, the only issue is the existing board has to decide that they reduce themselves from 20 to 12, uh, which is uh, from time to time a little bit difficult. So you, you, uh, this is, you know, I don't know how you call it, this is the frogs who decide on uh, no water in the, how do you call it, was it Sumpf? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Now, so you have a, you have a rather limited number of SEs in Germany. Bilfinger, thanks God, is one. Then you have 12 people. 12 people is way more, is, is much, is much better to sort of have good, good discussions and intense discussions than 20. Now, uh, if there are sort of professional supervisory board members, um, are they independent or not independent? Um, I, w I would say uh, if, they, um, if they clearly, or, or let, let me put it that way, it, it now depends on what happens if it's a five years election period or one year's election period. If it's a one year, I'm, as I said earlier, or maybe I, 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 I forgot to mention it, the, 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 the election period should be maximum two years. So board members should also be held responsible for their contribution uh, and they should be assessed in the board for their board work. And then you have sort of a system that does not guarantee but increases the likelihood uh, that board members work as agent for the shareholders, but at the same time take into account that there are other stakeholders. But there is no perfect world. But, but as such, it's, it's not negative, I would say. But do you really think that in the one year, I mean, there are two, tier, two years doesn't exist yet? No, I know. We'll have to introduce yeah. you to yeah. please you. But uh, <laughs> one year is pretty common. And my concern was always uh, that you become very biased and really not independent. <laughs> because you know that you have to be pleasing to be re-elected. And yeah. you, of course, get much more... Funny. Daniel, I heard that argument many, many times. I completely disagree. Mm -hmm. Completely. Because um, the, the, you get re-elected by the owners, <coughs> by the shareholders. So if you get re-elected working in the interest of the shareholders and the shareholders' preferences or interests are the wrong ones, okay, it's not a good system. 
but the, you know, th there's the the uh, if uh, or people manage it, implicitly, a one-year election period leads to short-term orientation. In my experience, this is not the case, because shareholders normally are interested in mid to long term wealth generation, i.e. share price development. And if you act too short term oriented, then you don't get, then you maybe, you, you increase dividend short term, but long term, um, you will, strong word, destroy value. So again, the only thing I can say, I don't see that problem, even though many people see that problem. I personally don't see it, and I haven't experienced it. So my preference is very clear, rather better one year than five. No, I disagree. I think it's transferable. Uh, I agree, BlackRock, I don't know, would be on, I don't know how many compensation committees. But if they sit there, and we would have a nomination committee composed of shareholders, of the of whatever, I don't know, biggest three, biggest four, biggest five. And they sit there. And BlackRock would have no clue who to propose. Let's, let's assume that for a second then they don't pro do not propose anybody, then others propose. This is BlackRock's problem and not the problem of the others. Or, or BlackRock over time uh, being challenged or being, seeing that challenge develops internal skills to be able to propose people. I agree with you, in a static world as of today, they might have problems. If that system would be introduced, in five years, they would have no problems anymore. David. Yeah, I don't know whether it's true. Uh, that, is what I, that is what I claim. But you're not forced to. I think, well, then others decide. <laughs> Absolutely. Say it again. The, the actually, having board members and knowing his experience yeah. is one of the most important things. Yeah. So I think the nominating a governing committee of those boards, that is a function of their vetting candidates. They're the driver behind them. What, you know, look at them, see if they look at multiple candidates. I, I know you brought that up. Yeah, yeah, and what you could do, um, also what you just said, I mean, if you don't have the capabilities inside, then you, then you work with executive search firms. I mean, if we look for an, an outside CEO, we, we, we work under normal circumstances with an executive search firm, and you do exactly the same. And if it's getting too expensive, then you in, in, uh, develop internal skills. So, uh, you forgive me, I disagree with your view that it would not be applicable in the UK, the Swedish system. And what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Well, well, 
Okay. But well, let's look at let's discuss that at the table later and permit other questions, David. But you permit that I disagree with you. Okay. Same here. So whether I understood your last point. Well, mm -hmm. if you pay a guy a million, assuming you get a hand million for your job, okay, does it make any difference how much you pay him in terms of the operation? It's all about money. The telephone is about money. Fifteen years of equity. How do you how much do you have to pay to make a proposition to do the job properly? You know, the, 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 my answer is I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> No, I don't know. Because I mean if, if money would be the only thing that matters, yeah. at least in Germany, you wouldn't have politicians anymore because they don't, they don't earn much money. They get paid by power and public attention. How much you have to pay in order to satisfy or make somebody satisfied, the answer is very simple, I don't know. The only thing I know, if I had to find a new CEO tomorrow, today, my CEO quits, I have to find a new one. Then I have to pay the market price, otherwise nobody comes. Whether this, is, whether this is justified or not, I don't want to get into that discussion. The market price is the market price. Or the market price has come to a certain level where it is today. Unless I pay market, I do not find the adequate person. I might regret that, whether you could say how much if you asked me, how much do you need to live? Had you asked me, no, 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 hang on. H had you asked me 30 years ago, I would have said X. Uh, if you asked me now, I would have said Z. Why? Because over 30 years, my living standard has gone up. And I've, I mean, that is a philosophical <laughs> question. And I don't want to enter into that one. So I argue, find the right people, you have to pay market price, number one. Number two, what is market price? Um, again, I put myself in the shoes of the owners. I want, I want people on board who run the show, who work in my interest, um, taking into account other stack stakeholders' interests, because if they wouldn't do it, that ultimately they wouldn't work in my interest. I, mean, I think that is we agree upon. Now, um, what is my 
being the owner, the shareholder, my ultimate interest, my ultimate, very, very, very ultimate interest is share price or total shareholder return, put it that way. It's dividend and share price development. That's it. How do I make sure that I find the appropriate people who work in my interest? One of the, I mean, I motivate them, I talk to them, I'm the nice guy, I'm the challenger, I'm everything, I do. But at the very end of the day, I need a financial incentive. And now the big question is, how big is it? And is it long term, short term, or is it a mix? Uh, how much is it? And my experience is what I find, and I think it works quite well, one third fixed pay, two third variable, they're of one third short term, one third long term. That's the system and the companies I'm a board member in. So, um, well, I don't. I, I, I'm an arrogant guy, you know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't need pay consultants anymore. I've seen enough, <laughs> and they're extremely expensive. I, 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 I you know. I <laughs> We've had many questions. I take so three uh, last questions. Four, okay. Um, but that's it. You. As a practitioner, or more precisely, as an objective first consultant, um, what is your advice to the next generation of board members or aspiring board members? What would you tell them what they should do? Board members. Potential. Yes, you know, I think um, um, one, of the, one of the prerequisites to become a board member is that you know um, how your life is when you serve on an executive committee. My, my conviction is, maybe I'm wrong, because I've seen ex some exceptions now, but Basically, I would say, before becoming a board member, control, <laughs> controlling and giving advice to executive committee members, you should have worked in that function before. Because it's very difficult, in my view at least, to really understand uh, what the difference is between a first liner, i.e. executive committee, or second liner or below. Maybe there are exceptions in very big companies where you are a CEO of a, of a multi-billion division. This is equal to executive committee member, you know, in a, in, a, in a smaller company. But that is a prerequisite, number one. Number two, this is in my view a must. Um, number two is you should or you must sort of take into account that being a board member has become a real job, i.e. you need enough time. Because somebody else, you know, responsibility or, or um, um, so your liabilities. You, at the very end of the day, you are liable. So number three, you should, if you ap not apply for a job as a board member, but get invited to serve on a board by whoever. Um, you should either have sufficient own experience in that kind of business the company works in where you would potentially work on the board or at least you should have the option or ability to sort of um, collect knowledge and collect experience which is once again a, a lot of work to be done. So. Um, I personally think, and that it is why it's much more, way more difficult to find, in my view, adequate board members for broadly diversified companies and more focused companies, um, that you must have or must be able to have, must able to gain sufficient experience to understand the business and that in conjunction with the own experience, how, what does it take and how does it look like or how is it, what is the feeling to run a company or, or be a member of the executive committee of the company. Unless you have it, it is more difficult to get a top board or to, to become a top board member.
the information from the board? Do you have the information you need to make a judgment? So you also mentioned the importance of not engaging in the operational detail of companies. Where do you see the line? How much can you depend on the committee, and how much do you need to go to the next round where it's appropriate to seek information beyond the committee and the board? Very good question, very hard to answer. Um, because in my view, it also depends on the case. Yeah, let me tell you what we do in, at Volvo. Um, we just had a discussion on the last board meeting whether we should go back to five board meetings a year. We have six. Six plus one, plus one full strategy week, big word, but you know, spending a week somewhere on the globe. And there was a clear decision not to reduce it to five, but stick to six plus the one week. The, the, the simple reason, in order to stay close enough and get, get sort of uh, always updated information, what's going on in the company, number one. Uh, I mean, you get it in written form, but you know, in then a six, nine, ten hour sport meeting. One day, and a, one, day, one day and a half. The other thing is that um, for two reasons, we try to invite um, um, as, as much as possible people who are not executive committee members but uh, are on the, on the layer below to present their cases or their business to the board. One reason being get as much, um, how to say, um, um, updated information and hear people who really run it. And the second reason is in, in trying to improve your sort of capabilities of assessing um, where the company really stands and is moving. And the second thing is, the more people show up in, in the boardroom who are not members of the executive committees, the more people you get to know and increasing your uh, capability of uh, assessing are they potential, uh, or do they have the potential to become at one point in time man, uh, 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 members of the executive committee. But there is no there is, no, there is no one rule. So the, 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 in my view or my experience is the frequency of meetings, the intensity of meetings, the number or the, 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 the agenda points, what are you dealing with in the board without assuming operational responsibility, but trying to understand as much as possible about the challenges, about competition. I mean, now in the automotive industry, understand about disrupting disrupting technologies. I mean, we must come to inclusion. When will autonomous driving really come? Will, in the truck industry, autonomous driving lead to trucks without cabin? Yes or no? You cannot sit there and say, well, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> so um, you have to dig into the matter and uh, into the details, which is cumbersome and a huge workload, and that you must do as a board member. Um, in, hang on, in, in Germany, uh, we, as I said, we have nomination committee, but that's a board committee. There you have people who serve on the nomination committee and the, call it compensation committee. Now I have to ask that the nomination committee in Sweden is obviously nomination committee, and they also discuss uh, compensation issues. I, I have to admit, I don't know, I, I'm obviously, I'm not on the, on the nomination committee because I'm, I'm, I'm not a shareholder representative. I, but they, the, the decision on, um, on, on, on executive committee remuneration issues is with the board of directors. So this is the decisive body. It's not the nomination committee. The nomination committee is only sort of recommending something, but not deciding on something. As we said, board members, AGM, compensation, board. Board of Directors. The reason I ask this question is because I'm beginning to understand that the international norm is that the two companies are separate for some very fundamental reasons. But in India, uh, for obvious jurisdiction I know, 
Ja. 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 Ja, yeah, I, I agree, but Yeah, but you know, once again, to, to avoid any misunderstanding, the, the, the complete difference, or that there's a different people, nomination committee, or the nomination committee only in Sweden consists of shareholders. There is no other jurisdictions, no, no other jurisdiction I know where this is the case. As I said, let me repeat this. In Germany, we also have a nomination committee, but the nomination committee is not composed of shareholders. It's composed <coughs> of existing board members, which might, I have to be called, which might lead to different proposals, right? And in my view, to be honest, selecting the right people who should serve on the board and deciding on, um, I don't know what deciding on the question <coughs> what is the adequate compensation system for the executive committee is a totally different question. Shareholders should decide on the compensation system for board members, and board members should decide on the compensation question for executive committee members. This is my view. So that's a different task. So it's different task. levels of different levels. System. Again, let me repeat once again: board board members are agents of the shareholders. One last so one last you. Yeah, I have um, actually questions from academia. It may be boring. Um, uh, you no, it's not boring, but I m might not be able to answer it because it's from academia. That's it. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned that, I mean, I had the sense that you don't uh, really favor the medicinal or political intention system. So um, uh, what, what's interesting, because we in academia believe that this is a sort of a big competitive advantage of German stakeholder approach, but I haven't seen, uh, I haven't heard in your, in your, in your uh, presentation anything about uh, creating shareholder uh, shared value or anything about how to incorporate the challenges to of climate change or uh, waste management. Yeah. So can, okay. can I propose the okay. last question? Okay. Which yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. Then leave yeah. Do you yeah. think you so this should be a question for the board? Well, it is, it, it is it's obligatory. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that if, if I want, if, uh, don't get me wrong, if I wanted to, given my brain skills, adequately answer a question, it would take one hour. But let me be, yeah. sh no, let me be short. Okay. Let me be, no, 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 that's perfectly okay. No, 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 no. Let me be short. Number one, I'm not in favor of the German Mitbestimmung, co-determination system. I am in favor of this, I am in favor of co-determination, the Swedish model. The, c the problem is 10-10 or 8-8 or 6-6. So if you have a point, the employee representatives say no, even though it's in the interest of the Vorstand or executive committee of the shareholders, unless the chairman uses his casting vote, you are blocked. That is not a good system. A good system is that you, that you in my view, there are, there are many people who say employees have no right to sit on boards. My view is different. I say it could make sense, in my experience, it makes sense to have them on the board, but employee representatives that work in that company, and they must be the minority fraction. So what's the point of having them on the board? I tried to explain it. First of, first of all, you get direct, uh, first of all, you get direct impact from them. You, you hear them if you say we have to close the plant in X, Y, Z, and, uh, and the other option is A, B, we close the plant in A, B, C. They bring their points. Um, if they, and they hear from the, from, from the, the, the takeaway for them from the discussion in the board is they exactly know why that decision was taken and what the alternatives would have been. My, 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 my experience is that helps, but not the German system. Especially in addition to that, 
on the employee representative side, there sit people who come from the union, uh, union headquarters, uh, uh, people who do not work there. This is, in my view, it's, it's uh, and, and you know, I'm a very simple person. Nobody has copied their system globally. Nobody. Let me repeat. We are the only country in the world but since. We're the no, we are not. We, we could be even stronger. <laughs> Just imagine we would have a different system. How strong we would be. Now, uh, there was on a lighter note. Now, the 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 other, the, the, the Again, I, I, I several times used the word stakeholders. O obviously, the board takes into account interests of others, employees, state. Um, should, we, should we incorporate things like avoiding waste or whatever in our, in our entrepreneurial targets? We could, but we should not be forced to do so. Because you talk about global competition and you must avoid that you impose sort of uh, rules and procedures on companies that reduces their, comp their competitiveness globally if the shareholders say, I want that, be my guest. Okay. But it should be a voluntary action. We, we, have, we really have to close it. That was a lively discussion well, and yet I feel that I have not taken <laughs> enough questions from this side and more from this side. So I'm sorry for that, it's only my mistake. Many thanks, that was a wonderful presentation and discussion and uh, we hope you enjoyed also part of the afternoon this evening in some way of compensation. Thank you very much. I, I, I I really, I really enjoyed it and I, I would be grateful if those uh, participants who disagree uh, with me, one opponent is sitting here, um, allow me to have a beer now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>